Hey everyone, I'm here with the tutorial. It's me, just like I promised. Just kidding, it's me. Here with the tutorial on making the altered book, journal, art book, whatever you would like it to be, out of things you have or can easily thrift. So here's the one I've been showing. It's my 100 day project book that I made and I'm trying to keep up. I am. I'm keeping up and creating every day for 100 days, but I had shown this so I um, mentioned that I could do a tutorial on it, so here I am doing the tutorial. So this one is larger than the one I'm going to show you today, but I'll show you the contrast. So this one is thicker and delicious. It uses an old book cover and I put in four signatures that have 18 pages each, which translates to 36 because they're folded in half times four signatures. So it's a lot of paper in there, but I wanted plenty for 100 days so here's a sample of the different kinds of papers that can go in. These are the handmade um, tea dyed looking from Amazon that I put some Daniel Smith watercolor ground on. So you can do plain, neutral, um, just some fun different kinds of um, papers, which I have gobs of and I'm going to be putting kits together. I have everything organized and ready, but I wanted to show this. I apologize for that video um, shadow. That's the light ring and the sun is coming in the window and the light ring is on, but um, it gives us some ambiance. So here's the book I'm going to use for this tutorial. It's one of those really adorable old Reader's Digest condensed um, books. And the really vintage ones are just so adorable. This one was a little bit brittle, so I'm going to be putting it back together. But all of the components are perfectly strong enough. So there are different ways to put books back together with their spines. Um, you can use fabric and glue. You can use packaging tape that is sticky. Here are some sample sizes. This is actually one that looks old, but you can buy. I think it's a Tim Holtz cover that you could create your own spine and tape it together. Here's a really probably antique um, book cover that could be used to make an adorable little altered book. All of these are for sale and just let me know if you have interest in any of them, but they're beautiful and the insides are beautiful and um, you can go to thrift shops, antique shops, yard sales, estate sales and find beautiful old books and take the insides out and use the, the outsides and the spines and create your own altered book, your own art journal, your own photo album, journal, writing journal, anything you want, lettering practice, anything you want. So here are some big ones, really big. So it's completely up to you what size you want, but you can find some amazing book covers and um, they don't have to come apart when you take them apart, but some of these came apart or were already apart when I found them. So um, they can be put back together again with glue and fabric or tape. So here's one that's still whole. And all of the papers from the insides can still be upcycled and repurposed and used for art pages. It's really neat to do um, painting and jelly printing on printed pages. So none of that has to go to waste and it all becomes ephemera. 
So there are different sizes um, of book covers and then you will just adjust, which I will show you, um, your papers to go inside according to the size of the book cover you have or find a book cover to fit the papers that you have. But collect all kinds of book pages, vintage office papers, old ledger pages, dictionary pages, um, anything, newspaper, graph paper, drafting paper, this book right here has this beautiful fabric cover. Cover, it's kind of linen-y. And then the covers, you can do anything you want to on the outsides. You can leave them or you can completely re-decorate them. Paint them, cover them, whatever you would like to do. But they find good, these um, good books with good bones all different sizes find the one you want my um, favorites are i have a bunch of these um old ones old book covers never get rid of those beautiful bits and pieces from the insides of the spines those make great pieces for using in art but I do love these fun Reader's Digest condensed book covers. And you can find the really neat old vintage ones. Or these are just kind of retro and really bright fun colors. All available for sale. And I will be putting together kits like I said. So you just open one of these up and take a knife and um, leave the first few pages and just slice down the side and, and the insides come out. And then you have the book cover. And some of these old ones ended up in two pieces or without the spine, but that's okay. We can create it. Nothing go, has to go to waste. Nothing is too far gone. They're all wonderful and useful. You can even use um, cigar box covers and turn those into book covers and create your own spine. So they're just, they're beautiful. And it's really fun to upcycle and recreate and reuse and repurpose, whether they're not very old or they are very, very old. If they're very old, you could cover it with um, clear gesso and help to protect it. That beautiful old, old cover. So this one has to be put back together. And it's so adorable. So I'm gonna work my way through putting it back together and decide whether I'm gonna use fabric or tape and glue. And I'm going to figure out what pages and papers I want in it. This big one that I've been showing recently um, is quite a bit bigger and has a lot more papers in it. So I'm going to figure out how many signatures I can fit and how many pages per signature. So a lot of them are going to have to be adjusted to fit, folded, torn, and I'll show you that. But first, let's put the cover back together with the spine. So thankfully it has that inside spine piece still attached and again those things were pretty brittle it almost cracked apart but that doesn't matter because I think they look fun put back together so part of um, the kits are these fun ties that I made to um, tie them up when they're done and I'll show you that at the end 
I have some that say, um, guard your heart, and some that say, breathings of my heart or your heart, which is what your journals and re repurposed books should be, filled with your things, your memorabilia, your art, your writing, whatever it is you're going to use it with. It will be all yours. I'll be selling um, kits that have some of these more custom pages and things that I have made, art pages and all kinds of fun stuff. Also, I'll be selling kits that are just neutral and um, ready for you to do your own. So um, I just have a, a lot, a lot of both. And I would love to be passing on some of each. But if you're interested in a kit, you could choose. Just neutral and not someone else's artwork or um, some with. And then go with it. And you never have to worry about the blank page. So these are tea dyed or um, eco dyed handmade papers. And old maps are fun. Just everything. Old music pages. The sky is the limit. And then you can do whatever you want on these pages. And the fun thing is the way it's put together is you can take these in and out and work on them. For instance, if you wanted to jelly plate on something, you could take a page out and finish it and put it back in. Or anything you would like to do. Leave it in, take it out, move it. it the whole thing is adjustable. Nothing is sewn in and stuck. So you can add and take away, take in and take out. So more dyed pages. This is old wallpaper and I folded it up and it made a little pocket. And these are fun pieces. They're actually called under papers from other art making, but always save those because they're beautiful. Everything can be repurposed, reused, reimagined, shared. So again, if you're interested in kits, they can contain really fun pages like this that actually just kind of turn out to be abstract art, jelly printed pages, fun pages that were made from a handmade writing implement, and just a lot of fun vintage papers that I find. School, office, all kinds of fun stuff tissue paper, folded to fit, can make a little pocket inside to hold things. They're so crunchy and yummy and fun, full of character and stamping and staining and dyeing and crinkly. So all of these papers will end up in this book. I'm going to try to divide them up evenly. Or you can go with a neutral bunch. So kits are going to be available with um, book covers and papers for inside and the tie for at the end. So these are fun torn fabric strips which I've sewn on and stamped on. And they're just kind of a fun way to tie up all of the treasures that end up in your book. Your handmade
So I'm going to start dividing these up. after I admire them. I've sewn things onto the edges. These are handmade papers available from Amazon and I will link these that are torn old ledger pages beautiful old dictionary pages. They used to have such amazing illustrations. So those make really fun pages. Papers that you can write on. I like to add some pages with lined writing, doily, more handmade paper. And this is a little repeat of all of the papers that are going into this um, littler book. So less pages than the big one. And they will be divided up into four signatures. Manila paper, blueprints, more lined writing paper, Some fun, crunchy, dyed and stamped and painted papers. And again, the really pretty wallpaper. And anything that's too big, you can fold it up and make these pockets at the side or along the bottom. So I guess I'm enjoying the art papers again, the beautiful under paper, the fun stamping and printing and playing art papers, learning. A lot of these are from classes that I've taken and I have boxes and boxes full and I would love to send them out in kits and share the fun. And one of my very favorite things is printing pages with a gel plate. So if you want to see any of that, let me know. I'll do a tutorial on that. I made my own gel plate and I love it because it's got bubbles and shabby edges and it creates amazing prints. Yep, so apparently we're going through the yummy art papers again, but that's okay. And onward to making, creating your book. Always have to have imperfections in my videos. That's what the Amish do in their quilts. They make sure that there's something wrong because they can't be perfect. And I do that without even trying. So next should be putting this book together. I'm using Aline's tacky glue. And in the end, it seems to be doing a really good job of holding well. But it doesn't come out of this little squeeze bottle very much. I guess I could cut the top a little more, right? So I really love that that whole piece of the spine is there to attach the outside on. It's such a cute book and such great colors. I just love it. The green and the gold and the blue, it's perfect. So 
So hoping for good adhesion. And then putting the front cover on and I love this, um, these rolls of um, packing tape. And this one in particular has the strings throughout so it's reinforced, but you just get it wet and it's gummed and then it sticks really good. I love using it in books and all kinds of art things. Even if it's a little shabby and I used some decorative scissors apparently at one point to cut that top edge because I just found this piece and it was the perfect length in my stash. So this spine is gonna need quite a bit more glue because it's so brittle and dry. So as we will see, it's gonna need a little more than just the sticky tape. Because I want it to hold good. So there's a the little corner that needs a little bit more glue. And I'll just keep working with it and making sure it's sticking and I can see if it's not and add a little more glue. And it's a little bit wet so this works pretty good from that packing tape. So, hoping it dries fast. I'm anxious to put it all together. But you can't hurry this. So there's a little bit of the brittle piece that broke off. So that's the string I'm going to use. And in my perfectly imperfectness, I did not rotate this video, but it's still okay. So I love using that Baker's twine. It's kind of white and gold. So it's perfect for this book. It's nice and strong. And I used it on the previous book. And again, I just really love this method because you can, it lays flat and you can move things and take things out and put them back or remove or add, but it holds real secure. So this big one that I made for the 100 day project, I put mostly watercolor paper and then that handmade paper that I bought from Amazon and added watercolor ground or gesso to different pages. I made four signatures and it's working out really well. It's just big and chunky and wonderful and full. So these papers for the little book need to be sorted into four signatures. That big book had a lot more pages per signature, but this is gonna end up with, I believe, 10 pages per signature and it fits pretty perfectly once it's all put together. So I'm making four piles of the papers I chose and I tried to have, you know, a, a several of each kind, but 
some are one of a kind, obviously, if they're art papers. So four piles in my video that I forgot to rotate, but it works. This clip. So I'm gonna make four piles and hope it comes out even. And then I'm going to slide them each into each other so that they are all in a hug. <laughs> a layered hug with one middle piece that will be tied in. They're gonna be spooned. 10 spooning pages, random. And I like to start with one of the bigger, sturdier pages so that the string holds really well on the main page of the signature. So I'm finding which page is the sturdiest one to start with. Ah, now I have my four piles and the video is turned correctly. I probably could have gone back in and fixed that, but that's okay. Four piles, 10 pages each. Find the sturdiest, biggest, because some of the pages are a lot more fragile than others and smaller, all different sizes and heights. Um, and I like to stagger and alternate different papers so they help support each other. And once they're in, those different sizes and heights can kind of slide up and down. So there's one signature. And I'm gonna go through and do the same thing and try to alternate. So if you make one of these, I hope you'll let me know and tell me what you're going to use it for. Is it going to be for art, a photo album, a gift? Is it gonna be for writing, sketching? All of these pages can have clear gesso on them so that you can watercolor or paint Actually, you should use the um, clear watercolor ground by Daniel Smith for watercoloring, but anything else on the other pages, no matter what kind of paper they are, you can put clear gesso, and then you can sketch and draw, you can do charcoal, you can do acrylic, you could probably even do oil if you could lay it open to dry long enough. You could write, you could compose music, write a play, write a book. Um, you can use this book for anything. I love making them and I've made way too many. But I like to have pages to sketch on, paint on, um, and also pages to write on. I like to practice lettering and some pages are just pretty to look at. That's an old, old doily, like half of one, but really sturdy and pretty. And again, old maps are fun, just pages out of atlases. So there are four signatures. I believe they have 10 pages each. And they're a little bit too big. So you could do all of this adjusting before you do this as you're picking pages. Or you can put your signatures together and cut them down or tear them down to the size you need. to fit in your book. And I like 
imperfect edges. I don't mind if some are smaller, some stick out a little bit, some are taller. They do need to fit within the spine so that you can tie that um, string around, which I'll be showing you. So these are some different ways to take off what's too big. There's mom's fabric only scissors that have obviously been trashed. Um, a paper cutter. You could use a big office paper cutter if you had it. But I like a torn edge. So I like to use a ruler or this deckle edge tearing ruler that I have. It's from Stampin' Up, I think. But I really love a torn edge. So I'm going to tear all that I need off with this deckle edge tool and um, each side has a little bit different size of a deckle edge. So just hold it really tight, really close, press down hard and tear off the edge and save all of these wonderful pieces of paper because they will become beautiful elements in other art and little books and which I will show you. So you need to think about, you need to look at your pages and think whether you mind if the top is torn off or the bottom, or they're just flippable, and also on the sides. I mean, you could change the fold and create a folded edge on one side or the other and not tear any off. Same with top and bottom, you could create a little um, folded pocket. So just pay attention to your pages and what you love, top or bottom, outside edge, what you don't mind being torn away, and then all of those pieces need to be saved because they can all be repurposed and used. So I started just layering pages and tearing. As long as you hold it really close and really tight, you're gonna get a nice little torn edge. So I, I was able to do several at a time. So I had one signature done, and now I'm doing another. I'm just removing. It was a little bit too thick. Too many, so I did a few little bit less um, it gets messy this way but I like that I love these torn edges but if you don't like that you can definitely cut with scissors or a paper cutter so when it got too thick I just opened it up held it real still and then I could continue where I left off. So again, you could do all of this before you choose, like as you're choosing your pages or as you're um, putting your papers together, but um, I went ahead and chose everything layered up those signatures, and then tore them down to size. And I really like it. When it's all done, I really love the rough edges. But I love shabby things. There's a little tag left. There you go. So there was a, a folded page, so that got torn off, but it will absolutely be repurposed. So look ahead through your pages and be sure you're not getting rid of edges that you don't want to get rid of. 
So here are some teeny tiny books that I've made um, that I wanted to show how it is so fun to use all these little bits and beautiful little pieces and edges and things and uh, repurpose them into these tiny little adorable other altered books. So save the pieces. There's another really fun little one. If you want a tutorial, let me know. It's safe to say I'm addicted. I love, love, love making these books. All sizes. And using all repurposed Beautiful things, old things, art papers. So this goes pretty fast, tearing the signatures down to size. Don't cut your fingers. Those deckle edge, um, that deckle edge ruler is pretty sharp. So safety third, always safety third. Keep saving all of the beautiful scraps. Oh, there are so many fun things to do with those. Maybe I'll do a tutorial just on all kinds of fun ways to use those because they're brewing in my mind. So there's another signature torn down to size. And the book is drying, the spine is drying, and here's the last one. And I tore it down and saved the beautiful scraps for more fun. You can um, kind of weave these long strips and make an amazingly beautiful piece of art. Glue them down, weave, weave some together and then glue them. I think I'm gonna have to do that. So four signatures in our little book that's drying, littler book. One of those is taller and I thought I was gonna be okay with it, but I decided to go ahead and... So I'm thinking about putting all the torn edges up in one signature and all the torn edges down in the next signature and alternating those because I just like the variety instead of having them all up or all down. And so that one is still too tall. I thought it was going to be fine, but it's not. It's too tall. Isn't it delicious? It's so yummy. So once I looked at this, I saw that it was so brittle that it was crackling open. The spine was secure where I glued it, but now the sides are going to need some extra TLC. So I'm figuring out what I'm going to do. So a lot more tacky glue. which comes out slow. And then kind of spread that out and decide what to seal it with. What would be fun? What would be scrappy? 
and hold it securely. So the glue is spread out. When it's um, when it is laying flat, it looks great, but that's not going to work when it's closing. So I went to my fabric stash, and I have friends who save the selvages from uh, yardage that they buy, and some of them are so fun. So this is um, two pieces of selvage that I grabbed, and they actually are practically perfect as far as the length when I put them together. So more, more glue, and then um, with fabric, these will be um, kind of flexible. So it'll be better for opening and closing than just some tape or paper. So lots of glue. Because the glue will really permeate the fabric and, and really hold. So spreading it out. And I think this will be fun. I think this will be a nice, scrappy looking um, spine. So I'm gonna have to trim a little piece off so there's not like a gap and I love torn edges so tiny little snip snip and then tear and fray the edges by pulling some strings out and you have a soft shabby spine which um, a lot of a lot of the parts of book spines are fabric anyway, so. So now, gonna have to practice more patience and letting this dry, but I'm really anxious to put it together. But it's gonna have to wait. I was going to set it outside in the sun or use a hair dryer, but I just let it dry naturally. I think that's kind of cute. Um, it's so fun because selvages, you know, they have the colorways of whatever is in the fabric design. And instead of just dots, now they're doing fun little images and things, and even some um, selvages you should be watching if you buy fabric and they have um, even some printing some quotes or poetry or things like that um, there are people who make whole quilts out of just the selvages because they're so neat so I decided that I better um, let that dry with the book closed not flat so that it's in the proper shape in the meantime, I decided to get the string ready, the baker's twine that I think is so perfect, excuse me, with um, it's white and gold. And so the book has green and gold and it's going to be perfect. So uh, measuring and cutting enough to wrap around the signature and the spine twice and plenty to tie. So it's about five widths of the, uh, the, the spine of the signature. So I'm gonna test it out. Oh, and be sure that your papers are spooning. Otherwise, <laughs> they're gonna fall out, but it's all good because you can slide anything in or out in the end because these are not sewn. They're tied in, secure. So there's the um, testing the measurement and a little over five widths is perfectly fine. 
to have enough to loop around twice and tie and even have some to trim off. So I'm gonna cut all of those while I'm waiting for that to dry and get that ready at least. Okay, so uh, one side dried and then I saw that the other side had the same issue. So again, I'm going to fill it with glue, lots of glue, Aline's tacky glue and spread it out and decide what to seal this side with. And I went to my stash and this is some of my own tea dyed and other kinds of things coloring it that I have done. I tore it in half so that it is um, frayed edges. So there's half of it long lengthwise. And that's what I'm going to glue the other side with. So again, more shabby, grungy, wonderful, um, altered book. So this way, um, even though that old, old, old spine was brittle, now it'll have the security of good glue and flexible fabrics to open and close. And I still love it. I love the fabric. And so now more patience, more drying. And I decide that I wanna move that down because I love that top edge and I don't want to be cutting or tearing that off. I want it to be secured on there. So I move that down a little bit, really press in through the glue so that it's sticking to the book and through the fabric. And sometimes I'm not in the view of the camera very well. My apologies, I try to keep track of that. There it is, so letting that dry. More patience. I really want to put it together. It's going to be wonderful. So patience, patience, wondering if it's dry, wondering if we can move forward. Did you notice my hands? Ha uh ha, -huh. just kidding. Seeing if you're still paying attention. This is our professional hand model. She would only help for a minute. <laughs> Back with mine. So it dried pretty well, enough to continue on. And I'm going to make a tiny snip and then tear so that I can have a frayed edge, not just a cut edge, and take some of the loose threads away. It might need a little bit more glue later, or I might leave it shabby if it feels secure enough. Save the cute scraps. Hmm. I wonder if we can finally put this together. Four signatures, 10 pages each. Find the middle of whichever one you want in front. 
Take one of the ends of the string, hold it down inside. And wrap it around twice, all the way around the outside of the spine and back. And it's all adjustable, so don't worry. If it's not perfect, it's all adjustable. Just be sure it's around the outside of the spine and through the middle of your signature. And I like to pull it snug, wrap it snug, right in the folds, but also make sure that there's a little room, like slip your finger underneath for adding more in case you would like. So it's fairly snug, but not too snug. It's just right. So tie a knot one way and then tie a knot the other way. So it'll lay nice and flat and then trim. I like to leave some tails. I think they're kind of fun. I don't trim them close. And these are my mom's fabric scissors only that can't even cut some string, but it works. So there's the first one and it's that easy. So scooch that one toward the front of the book and then keep adding the other three. And they're all adjustable and as you go, you can move. Just focus on finding the center, holding the string in the middle and wrapping it two times or more if you want. It depends. You can use ribbon, you can use leather, you could use... I like this size of string um, because it lays flat. It stays out of the way. So leave a finger space, but snug and tie. And not one way, not the other way. Cut the tails. You could have the tie at the top, in the middle, toward the lower end. It's totally up to you. I like mine tied in the middle. So there's the second one, and you can just scooch it over a little bit, and it's moving the whole signature and making room for the last two. And repeat. And make sure they're in the order that you want and up is up and down is down in case you have any um, directional things in your papers. But it's all fixable anyway because papers can be, all of these papers can be slipped in or slipped out, added to, removed. If you decide there's something you don't like at all or you feel like you ruin a page, you can replace. So pretty easy peasy. And I really just love this method and instead of sewing pages in. And I've made those. I've made the ones that you do sew in, and there's all kinds of really fun, pretty decorative stitching you can do through your signatures and through the, the um, spine of your book. I just think this is a fun look on the outside of the spine. So whatever size of book cover you find, um, if you find a really big one that's deep, you could add a lot more signatures. You could really fill a book up. 
You could make a book and the whole thing could be watercolor paper or lettering paper or sketching paper. Make them as small or as big as you want. And then remember, I have a large collection of book covers ready to go. In case you saw any that you love, just let me know. And then I will be putting together bundles of all neutrals, pages, and then a mixture with art pages, and a lot of bundles of really small, fun, ephemera, um, new things, old things, just all kinds of, well, that's a lovely shot. There it is. So there it is, four signatures tied in just like that. Even them out. And if um, things need a little bit of tacking back in, that's easy to do. And remember, you can use, you might not need anything to, if you find a book that is in really good shape as far as the spine, but you can use anything, inside or out, to secure your spine. Fabric, washi tape. I like to reinforce washi tape with either glue or um, tape runner or glue stick, just so that you're sure it sticks really well. So here is the inside of this fun new book. What I like um, um, for these papers that are handmade is again, the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. There's transparent or white. And then on the other pages, you can do clear gesso, white gesso, black gesso and go for it but if you want a watercolor do um, use the watercolor ground on porous pages but you can watercolor on book pages and a lot of the other ones without needing to worry about watercolor ground it's just these handmade ones handmade papers are so porous it'll just go right through I like that these books lay flat with the spines done this way, um, but if you do need a little, if you're at the front of the book and you need something um, to help, you can just put a book under that front cover. And there's the first signature. And it's all random and fun and crunchy and crispy, delicious, abstract and artsy. And every signature can be different or you can make one whole book completely uniform and beautiful and ready for what you want. It just feels so good. And every now and then you might need to adjust the strings on the spine. I'm just thinking again about um, the things you could use to secure your spine. Fabric, tape, anything you want really, as long as it's can open and close and it's secure. So there it is. I really, really hope that you try to, you do make one and let me know about it, maybe in the comments. Or if you have a YouTube channel, make your video. And keep in mind, I will be putting together kits very soon
I can do kits, complete kits, the book cover, papers, and a bunch of funny ephemera for inside. Fun and funny. I have loads of so much fun. Things I've made, old things I've saved, bits and pieces. I have a little booklet of these old, old labels, the, the red and cream. So I, I typed on an old typewriter and put, I typed some funny or endearing things, but then I just made copies. Sometimes the copy is on um, label pages, so they're actually stickers. But you can use anything. You can use um, negatives, old office stuff. This is a, the inside of an envelope. I have a friend that saves them all for me, and this is so gorgeous. It makes me want to subscribe just to get the envelopes. And some friends and I just did a swap of really fun ephemera and papers. Um, these are some of my art pages. Wrapping paper can be beautiful. And again, old ledger papers. The sky is the limit. This is the inside of an envelope again. I mean, think about what you throw in the trash. Scrapbook pages. Take a second look. Old ledger pages with beautiful handwriting. I mean, they should not be thrown away. Isn't all of this stuff wonderful? From thrift stores, from the trash, out of old books, old music. Um, just every little thing, every cute little thing can end up as a wonderful element on a really fun art page. So here's two sizes, but they can be any size. And tiny is also very, very fun. You could even get children's, little tiny children's books at a thrift shop and take the insides out and make yourself a teeny tiny altered book just like this. Or you could get a huge book and make a huge one. So that's how um, easy it is to slide papers in and out. Add, take away. And here is the yummy, beautiful, fun, altered book for whatever purpose you would like to make one for. Plain, neutral, or full of ephemera and art pages. And then you never have to worry again. You don't have to worry about the blank page or the white page. You are ready to dive in. So again, here's the um, sweet book wrap that I will be adding into some of my kits. Some of them, again, say um, guard your heart and some say the breathings of your heart, which is from a quote about writing. Fill your page with the breathings of your heart. Or you could make your own. Or find some, figure out some other really fun way to enclose or latch. So when I say I'm organized and prepared to start making kits, I am not kidding. And I have gobs of wonderful, wonderful papers and ephemera and book covers. Ready for you to fill your beautiful books. For yourself, for gifts, and thank you so much for joining me.